Welcome back. For decades, my next guest has been one of Ireland's most successful businessmen, a self-made millionaire. His story of going from rags to riches inspired many people to start their own business. But in the past 12 months, he has seen his fortunes turn when he faced one of his most difficult years to date, both in professional and indeed personal life. Would you welcome, please, Bill Cullen, ladies and gentlemen. I get knocked down, but I get up again. Nice you to see you. You know, Ryan, it was 20 many years ago that I sat here with Gay Bourne. Jeez, what was it, about 20, 20, 25? 20, 26 years ago. 26 yeah. years ago. And it was great, only it was more people. Yeah. And, uh, and they were all smiling. They were all smiling. Oh, Happy they're, days. They're smiling now, some of them. And that was a recession then as well, but yeah. they were all smiling. And that's a bit of a difference because it's much sharper today. It's yeah. much tougher for people today. And uh, I'm going to try and make sure you're all smiling when I get off the stage. Good okay? on you. You've survived okay. recessions before, haven't you? Oh, stop. Don't go... <laughs> you have, though. You mean you've, the 50s? You... Yeah. The 70s? Yeah. Uh, this one, the 80s. And this one is probably the worst. It's the toughest one. The toughest one of them all. It's longer. And uh, it just seems that it... There's lots of things we should have done, and we haven't done them. Yeah. And we've got to move fast. Sure. But the big thing we all have to do is stay positive. Yeah. You have to have your health. And you have to keep going. You have to keep on going. Yeah. Tell us about the, 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 your, the, the, the what's, what's the year you've had? A, when things were, were rocking for you, going really, really, oh, yeah. really well, how, how good did it get for you, Bill? It what? got terrific. Yeah. Um, you were able to, I, I might work hard. I get up at four in the morning. Oh, I always yeah. did. And I get a 20 hour day. So I love that, getting up early in the morning. What do you do at 4 a.m., you and the birds? Well, I've three, quarters, I've three quarters of an hour of workout yeah. to stay fit. Yeah. I read and I write. Yeah. They're the things I do early in the that's morning. That's the early bit. Yeah. And that takes that's you to about bit. half six when yeah. the rest of us are getting <laughs> up. And then, yeah, but I'd be, I'd be in the office yeah. in those days. I'd be in the office at just half six, seven o'clock. Would you? Yeah. And is that part that, of the key to the success? It, it is. It's, it's, it, it helps your own people working, not for you, but with you. Yeah. As the, the, and I'd be there early, they'd come in, the fellas say, right, Bill, what can we do? They start coming in earlier themselves, yes. and it starts to work right through the whole system. And that's why I always said I had great people working for me, because you were able to pick up, they'd give you 120%. Yes. And it's something that we all have to look at today in our lives and say, am I given 120%? You've, you've because always that's been, what we need to get out of this. You've always been clearly a, a wily businessman. You've given talks, and you, you've, you've you kind of set the, set the bar for a lot of business people in Ireland. So. When you saw the clouds forming for this recession, when did you realise there's trouble brewing? Well, it was like everyone else. It was 2007, wasn't it? Yeah. 2006, 2007. What was but, happening then? Um, well, for the you. whole thing. For me, we were still going very well. Yeah. You know, we had a great business. We took it over in 1986, bought the company for a pound, took on 22 million of debt yeah. right in the middle of the thing. Yeah. And uh, we worked our way out of it. Sure. We got very good. We, we got Renault up from... A, 2% to 8% of the market, mm -hmm. and that moved from 1,500 cars a year to 12,000 a year. Yeah. So in all, I sold 250,000 Renaults, and that's what I have this for. This is a Chevrolet from President Chirac for all that. That's a, it's a, it's a, that's Sir William. A, a, I'm Sir William. I'm Sir William. I'm Sir William. We should have introduced you differently, Bill. Well, you can call me Dr. Bill, or you can call me <laughs> Sir William. It's all like that. We, don't have, we didn't but, have enough uh, time on the show for the titles, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but you saw the clouds forming, as you said, like everyone else, but, but in your own business, when did it start getting just messy, if you like, and difficult? Well, it started getting messy. Renault uh, terminated me in 2007 yeah. and took back the franchise. Uh, the first two years were tough. Yeah. 2010 was good. Good. But then at the end of 2010, my relationship with the Renault head people okay. here just broke yeah. down. Okay. Broke down completely. Yeah. And within six, seven, eight months, they had pulled my credit yeah. uh, with Renault France, uh, with Renault Finance. And from there on, it, it was changed just, everything. Was the end of it. How did you? I mean, you need, you need us. We need about six billion of a loan just to put the, the cars on the forecourt in yeah. the dealership. How did you, like, as as a, as a boss, deal with the the very human element of saying to people, "I'm sorry, the work isn't here for you." Well, did I you, was, did I you say to them, them face to face? Oh yeah, I was there with them for the whole two weeks before the banks closed us down. Yeah, and I had to talk to them all and say, "Look." Uh, we're fighting this. We were still in it to the very end. We were trying to get other franchises, but yeah. it didn't work out for one reason or another. Some of them spurious reasons, but whoever. Yeah. And uh, we talked to all the guys and we said, this is very simple. I can't keep going anymore. I've put millions into the company to keep it going, but we can't go on the way we are. We've no, nothing to sell. We haven't got a, a franchise. So we had to 
I said, I said that to the mall one by one, we all shook hands. And I said, the receiver would be here in half an hour if he's going to stay on and see him or not. And he said he would. The bank had promised that we would get, they would get uh, their paid for that period that they were working out. And then the receiver says, no. You How many people are you them. talking about? We're talking about 60 people there, but there's another 40 had gone in, in, in the country dealerships yeah. that was in Dublin. Was that, was, that, uh, was that as hard as losing a business to tell people about they're losing their jobs? Well, I had, to, I had to swallow the fact that it was probably my whole life's work that I, had, uh, that I was given up on. And uh, I didn't find it hard because I felt so sorry for the guys. I mean, we were talking about 100 families here yeah. in all the dealerships. And that was tough. And it was even tougher then when the, the receiver said, I need all your <coughs> car keys, I need your laptops. And then you said, go. And one of the lads tripped up, and, how am I going to get home? Yeah. And the answer was, there's three ways, taxi, a bus, or walk. I thought that was terrible. I felt very, very sad on that, and you know, you could have really, so I to hold me back. But that's the way it happened. Now, that's wrong. I just felt that if things are going very bad for people, we should be sympathetic about it. We should say, can we help? As it is, we got them all home ourselves, but uh, it was a tough thing for someone to say. Will you tell me about Aidan? <sighs> yeah. Aidan, <clears throat> there was 14 of us in the family. Aidan was the youngest. Rita was the oldest, and I was the eldest boy. Aidan worked with me from the time he was 14, 15. Uh, he went to America for about eight years and worked in the motor business over there. Came back to me 20, yeah, 22 years ago, mm -hmm. and then worked with me. And he ran our airside um, dealership out in Swords, which is a magnificent place, first class, and he drove it and drove it very, very well. When all this happened, he was under huge pressure with bankers were getting windy about things. Um, we had problems getting cars. And he took it much harder than I did. I kind of understood where we were going. And what was it? We, were, we, closed, up, we closed up on the 11th of October ish. Yeah. And I said, right, Aiden, we're, Aiden, we're going to work together. And the two of us will set up something. Yeah. And I said, about a week mm -hmm. later, I said, come on, we're going to Cork. I have a car down there to pick up. Went down and said, now we're going over to the, the hotel in Killarney and stay with us. He said, no, I have to go up to town. He said, are you sure? He said, yeah, no, come on over. Get no. So anyway, he didn't come. And that was on Thursday evening. And on Saturday night, I got a call that he had passed away. What and you, it was sheer stress. When was that? That was on the, well, two weeks afterwards. It was about the 18th, 26th, 6th of October. Just, of, yeah. just last yeah, year? It was two weeks after they closed us down last year, yeah. Oh, and, sorry. Uh, yeah, like... the, the thing about it was, and I, I have to say this, the thing about it was that it was stress. Aidan was a fella, slim like you, yeah. full of beans, la, 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 54. And he was all go, and no one could say anything about the dealership. Yeah. It was spotless. The Renault fellas would come down and look at it and say, this is first class. And uh, if, so when, when the thing stopped, it obviously hit him. He was sitting at home looking at the telly. He says to his wife, uh, I've painted my jaw. She went down, he fell on the floor, and he was dead. Painted the jaw, I, I understand, is the tie ride van connected to the heart. And I was sheer stressed. There was nothing wrong with him. We have Massive the, heart attack. We have this picture that I think is such a sweet shot, um, as you can see there. Will you, which one are you? I'm the biggest one at the back. And who's that in your arms? Aiden. What is he? He's 10 months older now. And that's all the rest of the gang. Well, some of them. One, two, three, four, five, ten. And that was it, and he came around behind me all the time, holding on to me bum, swinging out me, me, me trousers, you know, and he'd say, come on, Limo. My dad was Bill, I was Limo. And he used to call me that. Yeah. And it was great. It how was you, terrific. How are you getting on? How am I getting on now? Mm. Very well, we've picked ourselves up, because not alone did Aidan die, but three weeks later, our eldest sister died. Oh, God almighty. Over what happened? Her. What happened to her? It's a funny one. She was eating her, her, her meal at night, to eat early over there, six o'clock, having her dinner. Yeah. And she was eating the chicken, and she started coughing and got all red in the face. She was with my other sister. A uh, doctor came in who was not far away and couldn't get it. They thought it was a bone in her throat. When they got her to the hospital, she died about an hour later. They found it was stuffing from the chicken was caught in her. Most her, unusual. Her, yeah, most unusual. And she died. And we didn't get her body back for till two weeks later because the police are investigating where the chicken came from, where the stuff came from, a bit like our burgers and you know, all that. Yeah. So that whole process went through and she was, um, <sighs> she was gone. And to get two of, two of my closest um, siblings go in three weeks uh, wasn't easy. And I'm going over to Boston in the morning 
to tidy up the last of the administration and get the final report on what was caused.